So it's been a few weeks since Sonoma came out and well over a week since Open Core Legacy Patcher 1 came out. Today we'll be installing Sonoma finally on an unsupported Mac and not this one right here, but in fact the world's fastest 2009 Mac Mini. This should be fun. Welcome back guys. I'm Greg Rodka of Rodka Mods and sorry for the one week hiatus here. Uh, I've been recovering from both a sinus infection and an injured back. I'm still not fully here. But um, right before all that happened, I started filming this for Open Core Legacy Patcher 1, uh, which is 1.0.1 now. And uh, this for some reason won't boot and we can't figure out why. It's not a big deal. We'll figure it out. I'm sure the next patch will come out and fix it. Uh, but uh, I've tried multiple drives. It just doesn't work. So I stumbled across the world's fastest 2009 Mac Mini from this video up here. And what we're going to do today is first boot it up, show you what's on it, and how it's currently set up because this thing hasn't been turned on since 2019. And uh, if you guys are hardcore Crazy King fans, you may know why. Um, and I just haven't started it since I got back. So yeah, we're going to boot it up, show you everything that's on it, and uh, then we're going to wipe the whole thing and install Sonoma through a flash drive, this particular one actually, and uh, should be fun. So let's start up. All right, so real quick, I've got a USB 2 hub right here plugged in. We'll need this to install Sonoma because Sonoma on any Mac made before 2012 doesn't support keyboard and mice or any other uh, USB 1.1, 1.0 standard device. And you'll need a USB 2 port, um, a.k.a. the hub, just to trick it because the way Macs were made before 2012 they used base 1.1 controllers that could also be 2.0 controllers. It was really strange. But because of that, Apple has removed that since, when was it? I believe it was Monterey. Or, no, it was, it was Ventura. Uh, since Ventura, they have taken out 1.1 support for USB. So we have to rely on a USB 2.0 hub just to use the keyboard and mouse until it's installed. Um, so that's just a brief thing there. So let's boot this thing up and we'll take it from there. And I believe this had a boot problem. If I remember from the live stream, it kept trying to boot into boot camp. And there is no boot camp on this. Yep, I think it's trying to right now. Yep. Huh. My USB hub seems to be doing jack. It's still not responding. It's not a good sign. This is like a cursed video. That's all I got to say. This is very cursed so far because I can't get anything to work. There it goes. All right, we need to go into this one. And we start booting into the Catalina Patcher. And here we are in the Catalina Patcher. And if you notice there, it says Crazy Ken right there on the screen. And I actually had to watch the live stream, which is right up here. It's like five hours long. If you really want to watch it, it's unlisted now. But uh, I had to watch it just to log in. Because I have test booted this once. And his magic password was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Enter. And this is the Catalina install that Crazy Ken installed on his live stream. This was an early Catalina patcher install, as we can see right there. 
is the world's fastest 2009 Mac Mini running Catalina. So we're going to now plug the keyboard back in the proper way um, through the hub and we are going to actually now try to boot with the flash drive. This should be interesting. Let's try it. So real briefly, we're going to skip to a video that I was filming for the MacBook Air video that didn't get finished. And uh, I'm going to show you quickly how to make a install drive. And then we're going to boot this. All right, so before we install Sonoma, we will need a system that is running at least Yosemite and is actually running the OpenCore Legacy Patcher 1 or later. Right now, 1.0.1 is out. So we will open that up on my iMac that won't close this window. There we go. Nope, that, yep, there it goes. Okay. Open core. We'll need a flash drive right there, which I need to plug in. Maybe. There we go. And what we need to do is net, we need to make the patcher work with this system over here, which means we have to tell it what system we want the patcher to be for. So what we go is to settings here. Now, if you're doing it on the system you're already on, it doesn't matter. It will just use it by the host model. But if you're not, you've got to have the specific version for your system. And I believe that is a MacBook Air 2 comma 1. Oh no, let me look real quick. Yep, 2 comma 1. So 2 comma 1. So we've got that set up. The only thing we need to do is make a Mac installer. You can download it directly from here. This gives you the warning about how all that won't work, but it will, so. And we'll let it download, and then it will start doing everything. We're about to turn it on. Minute 55 into this section of the video. We're patching up for open core install. We want to install it onto the flash drive. That way, the MacBook can actually boot off of it. And we have finally finished making the boot drive. So now let's go over to the MacBook Air and let's plug it in. And we'll briefly explain what you have to do to make this work. All right, well, welcome back. Let's zoom out here. Put you down here a little bit. And let's try to get this to read the drive. It does not like reading keyboard commands from this hub. Uh, the MacBook Air didn't have this problem. All right, so now we gotta get creative. So, we have to first go into the boot menu, <laughs> and then we have to switch to the hub and print reads the hub. So, all right, switch to the hub. This hub worked fine. <sighs> I'm about to lose my mind. And this is why this is the cursed video I should have never tried to film. 
Works fine. Mm. Now, let's see if it will go back to the hub. Ah, oh, what the hell? Now it won't plug in. further than the other one and the mouse works whoo I was starting to sweat there all right so we're gonna wipe the whole thing continue we're just gonna wipe everything so what I need is you all devices erase we want an APFS. And erase. There we go. So now we have the drive formatted properly. Close disk utility out. Install Sonoma. Maybe. There it goes. We read the agreement. Hard drive. There we go. We'll let it install. So you guys just watched the start here, and uh, for some reason the system doesn't automatically boot into what it's supposed to, uh, which uh, apparently has been a common problem with a number of people. The only thing you gotta do is, I guess with my hub, unplug the keyboard, plug the hub back in, fix the boot selection in the boot menu, let it finish installing, uh, and then plug the keyboard back into the hub. A little complicated but it's not that bad so let me do that real quick we want to boot into that and now it continues to install And welcome to Sonoma. We are in the unpatched setup right here, which means this is going to be extremely slow, I have a feeling. Let's get this all set up first. So while we wait for it to create the account, this is the forewarning. When you're installing uh, Sonoma or any operating system that is not uh, supported and doesn't have graphics acceleration, everything slows down to a slow crawl. So, yeah, it's, it's not fun, but uh, once it boots up and you can finally modify stuff, and update the patcher, <laughs> then it's it's not quite as bad. But the initial setup's painful. Very painful. Oh boy. All right, so we are in Sonoma with no wallpaper. Let's see how bad this looks right now. There's the wallpaper. What the? 
Uh, okay, then. <laughs> like I said, no acceleration. It's a little painful. About this Mac again. There we go. So it actually looks like it's already patched the graphics. That's, I wasn't expecting that. Okay, it hasn't. It definitely hasn't. But let's go to more info. And as we're doing this, it's going to probably bring up the patcher, but if it doesn't, we'll have to actually force it to open. And I don't know if it installed it. This is the first time I've installed Sonoma on an unsupported Mac this old. And boy, is it slow. All right. So the patch is not loading. I know it's not patched because it wouldn't be this slow otherwise. There's the patcher, but it's, there it is. Okay, let's open it. So first we need to install OpenCore onto the drive that's built in. Okay, let's not do that. Let's reopen OpenCore. Let's, let's reopen, oh, will you please close it first? Oh boy. See, I want to show you guys the experience of installing Sonoma. It's pretty smooth until it's actually installed. After you get it patched, it's really smooth. But before it's patched, uh, hmm. Force quit. Force quit. Try that again. We'll do the root patches first. Maybe. It says the patches are already installed. Huh. Yes, I would. See, the patcher is a little slow. Yeah, yes, I would. Let's, let's close this one first. We don't need to open. So the, the automated part of the installer should work. I'm surprised it actually installed the root patches already. So after this restarts, it might actually fix some stuff. We need to put it on this drive. Reboot. Restart. We'll let it restart and see how it works afterwards. So I'm going to unplug the flash drive. We'll let it reboot. All right, it booted on its own. What I am going to do is log into the Wi-Fi, and I may actually reinstall the root patches. Um, but we'll, we'll see how that works, because the Wi-Fi suddenly stopped working, and now it's working again. Yeah, one second, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to reinstall the root patches just to see if it changes anything. Um, but you probably won't have to do this if you're installing Sonoma with an unsupported Mac. I just haven't done this on something this old yet, so I'm going to do it. So I'll let that do it, and then uh, we'll come back. Hey, you actually booted into the bootloader this time, which means the boot selection may actually be fixed now. Yay! But yeah, it's booting back up. We'll see you in Sonoma. Okay, so I reinstalled the root patches, and it actually is running a lot quicker, so that is a bonus. Uh, if you are having problems with your install being kind of sluggish and slow, like for instance, the wallpaper, 
The wallpaper would pop in about 30 seconds later after the desktop loaded, and it would close out anything you had open briefly, and then it wouldn't. It actually automatically loads everything now, so the graphics acceleration actually works now. And if we go into about this Mac, there's no more glitches. So the patch it installed, I would say, was uh, a little corrupted. So I'm glad I did reinstall everything, because now it's quicker. As we can see, that's a lot faster. So, yeah, the world's fastest 2009 Mac Mini. That's all the details about it. Still works totally fine. If we go over here, open up system information, that's so much faster. Yeah, the default drivers did not install properly. But yeah, here it is. Everything's working now. And it's, it's as snappy as a supported Mac if you have an SSD and Mac RAM in it. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell this isn't supported. We'll open up Safari for the first time. And it's going to load pretty quick. That's, that's not bad. Let's go to YouTube. Well, it might help if I log into Wi-Fi real quick. All right, now we're logged into Wi-Fi. Let's go to YouTube real quick. All right, it's not the world's fastest load, but it's still loading quickly enough where it's useful. So if we go and open up one of my videos, we'll open up the cubes video. We'll load up an ad one second. We'll skip the ad. See if sound works. It's working good. Which I just got. Um, Let's go. Whoa, that was interesting. It turned all the blue orange. That, that was different. Maybe. There it goes. We'll open up Sean. It's not bad. We're running at 1080p natively. It automatically selected it. That is sweet. So I'm pretty impressed. Sonoma seems to work better than uh, any other thing that I've been running on this system in a long time. I mean, it's just... It's quite impressive. So, yeah, that's Sonoma installed. Now let's wrap up the video. All right, guys, so let's reminisce about old school Open Core Legacy Patcher. In the early days, if you remember, the Patcher didn't automatically install all the drivers you needed. And to install those drivers, you had to be connected to the internet, which sucked because uh, unless you had ethernet, you couldn't update the drivers. Well, later on down the road, the patcher actually had every driver you needed built into it. You just had to run the patcher and it would patch it. Well, until Open Core Legacy Patcher 1, this is 1.0.1, .1, it didn't automatically install the drivers until after you've installed the OS and you installed the drivers with the patcher yourself. Mm -hmm. Now it automatically does it, which makes the system a little more functional unless it corrupts the drivers while it's doing it. 
and uh, we ran into that problem. So if you ever have a problem installing Mac OS unsupported on an unsupported Mac, especially one that doesn't have metal natively supported on it, um, you may want to reinstall the drivers with the open core patcher by just redoing the, uh, the uh, root patches and you're good. And the open core installer will also automatically detect, although it takes a while, if you are booting off a flash drive. And it will to ask you if you want to install the boot stuff you need to make it work, which I'd recommend doing so you don't have to use the USB stick. And it makes everything just work. As we see here, everything works really fast everything works perfectly and you can do basically everything on this 2009 Mac Mini that you could on a supported Intel Mac more or less as long as it doesn't require metal or some CPU instruction that you just don't have it will work and it will do it properly and that's the only drawback is a lot of apps now require metal and this will sort of bypass that requirement sometimes, but not always. So if it requires metal, you might be SOL, unless you can find an older version of the program that, open, that uses OpenCL. Like for instance, if you're using Final Cut, the last version was 10.4.6. And I know this because it was the last one that I could use on these Macs uh, without metal support. Um, that was the last one that used OpenCL, and you've got to get a little tricky to get it to open, but it should in theory open on this. You've just got to go through the package. I'm getting off topic, but anyway, you can open it usually, um, at least in the OSs I've tried. And uh, the point, part where I said it's kind of slow and buggy when you're first setting it up, well, that would be true if the driver didn't install properly. As we saw there, it didn't install properly and I had to reinstall it. If you don't have graphics acceleration, initial setup is extremely painfully slow. But if you've got graphics acceleration, it will set up like any other officially supported Mac and it will just work. So I think Open Core Legacy Patcher, other than its few little bugs, but I mean, that's understandable because it supports 83 Macs now. Um, you know, it works quite well. Um, there, It's hard to support 83 Macs and figure out every tidbit that doesn't work with them, like that MacBook Air that didn't work. <laughs> but I'm sure it will in the future. And we'll figure out how to get this to work with the uh, MacBook Air eventually. And I'll do a video on that too, because I still want to experiment with it. And I wasted like four or five hours filming that thing for it not to do anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why it's taken a week to release this video. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. The screen is still up. Cool. Uh, wasn't sure if it was going to stay up. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. This has been an experience, and I hope you guys really enjoyed watching everything that it takes to do this. I covered every single aspect of it all the way through the install just for you, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, guys, I do now have a Patreon. If you'd like to support me, there'll be a link at the end of the video and also in the description below. I also have memberships on this channel now. So if you hit the join button down over here, you can join and see some behind the scenes stuff. And if you're a Patreon member, you can see these videos over a day early, sometimes earlier, and sometimes there's multiple new videos up. When I film a bunch in bulk, I'll slowly release them. Patreon gets them first. And like I said, with the memberships, you get to see behind the scenes tidbits and previews and stuff you don't see anywhere else. So if you want to support me, I'd greatly appreciate it. But yeah, that's the end of today's video. Uh, so uh, stick around. We're going to show you a few things at the end of the Rutke Mods thing um, about the last video that didn't work. And uh, I'm not going to actually finish that video. We'll refilm that in the future, I'm sure. So stick around for that. And this has been a Rutke Mods video.
Hey guys, do you remember this? This, my late 2008 MacBook Air. Well, today we're going to be installing Sonoma on it with Open Core Legacy Patcher and just seeing how bad it really is because this is this, probably the second slowest Mac you can do this to. And well, attempt number one is not working. Let's try some troubleshooting here. I'll be back. Hanging up in the same spot. So, uh, yeah, uh, this is starting to get annoying. All right, let's see what verbose mode says. I believe it's freezing on validating root DMG base system, base system dot DMG. I'm thinking the flash drive I'm using isn't uh, going to work after spending two hours setting it up. Yippee! Great. Hey, it might actually be doing something. Nope, it's panicking. Nested panic detected entry count to panic caller. Yeah, I'm going to have to change flash drives. So I got to make it all over again. Yay! All right, I made another flash drive. Rule of thumb, if uh, a 16 gig doesn't work, even though the installer says the minimum you need is a 16 gig flash, use something bigger. This is a 32 gig, and I noticed that when it was making the drive, it actually wrote more data to it than the 16 gig did. In fact, it wrote more than 16 gigs on it, so uh, I think the uh, size requirement needs to go up a little bit. But let's try this again. And just see if it at least boots into the installer before I go to bed. And it did crash exactly in the same spot with a whole new flash drive and even a, yeah. This is going to be a long video.